It is playoff time. Now let's start with 6A. Gardendale hosting Oxford. And on the first snap of the game, Rockets quarterback Tyler Nelson drops back, delivers to Aiden Cups, who fumbles the ball. It's recovered by Oxford's Eli Bozeman for a big return. Now in the red zone, the Yellow Jackets on the attack. The ball pounces off Mason Mims, but is picked up by Damius Wilson, who evades defenders, hits the corner, and scores, putting Oxford up 7 0. On the Rockets' next drive, Nelson will read the defense, and we've seen this a lot this year. Takes the option run up the middle, shakes off a yellow jacket, goes 55 yards, and Gardendale wins a round one playoff game 31 to 14. In the last two seasons, 7A Region 3 went 4-0 and in opening round games. Remember, only 16 teams in the 7A draw. The top-ranked Hoover Bucks opening up with Bob Jones at the Met. First possession, Noah Schubach. The freshman hits K.J. Law for the pass, and Law breaks the tackle and gets in for the game's first score. It's 7-0 Bucks. Early second quarter now, Bucks running back Lamarian McCammon goes around left in for the score. And Hoover's up 14-0. It was 14-7 at halftime. Third quarter, Bucks up 21-7. And special teams, Caleb Jackson will block the punt. And the Bucks are in business. A few plays later, it's Kamal Amerson rumbling in for six to make it 28-7 Hoover. And then in the fourth quarter, shoot back to Jordan Woolen for a big game. Inside the red zone. And then Amerson is going to bust through again for another touchdown, and the Hooper Bucks win 45 to 13. So, will they get a rematch with Hewitt Trustful? The Huskies up in Florence playing the seventh ranked Falcons. And 10 seconds left in the first half. The Huskies in scoring range. Peyton Floyd. Peyton Floyd hits Brett Mosley. Huskies go up 28 to 13 at the half. Second half, it's Jackson Melton able to find some space. Cutting through defenders, taking it about 40 yards before finally going down. And then on the next drive, the Huskies driving again. Floyd throws it deep down the left sideline, but this time Jaleel Hurley is able to come down with the interception. But it's the Huskies winning 38 to 20. Hewitt at Hoover next week. Well, the marquee matchup in 6A was a rematch of last year's quarterfinals when Mountain Brook mowed down Pinson Valley 30 to nothing. Revenge on the Indians' minds tonight. Chris Yeager and the Spartans, man, they were locked in. Big play from John Coleman to Clark Sanderson. Set up the first score of the night. Cole Gamble, who had a huge night, takes the Wildcat snap, goes to the left side for the TD. 7-0, then Gamble on the carry. But look at this run. Busting loose, staying on his feet for a 42-yard run. Two clutch third down catches keep the drive going. The sideline going nuts, and Gamble will cap it with a five-yard touchdown. And Gamble was not done. His third touchdown in the first quarter, a 14-yard run off a direct snap, 21-0 Mountain Brook, and then Colvin escaping pressure. Chucks it up in the air, and it's caught by John Cooper. Gamble would follow it up with his fourth rushing touchdown, and the Spartans beat Pinson Valley easily, 49-7 the final. The defending 6A champs, the second-ranked Clay Chalkville Cougars, open defense of their title against Parker. Now the Cougars had a week off to get ready for the herd. And I don't think that was long enough. Third quarter, Parker down 6-0. Malik Muhammad hits Carl Pitts on the slant route, and he's gone after the extra point at 7-6 Parker. Later in the fourth, Muhammad back again for Parker, looking to escape, gets the ball stripped. D'Angelo Barber will scoop it up, and he'll run it all the way to the 30 Yard line, fourth down now for Clay Chalkville. Kamari McClellan tries to hit his wide receiver in the back of the end zone, but overthrows him. Parker coach Frank Warren lost his brother in a car at wreck in September. Tonight, an emotional Warren and the herd get a huge win. Shocking Clay Chalkville, seven to six. Hey, I'm gonna give us a chance. We had about oh yeah. I lost my brother. These boys help me. They fight through this for me, baby. Hey. I love these boys. We had injuries all year. People talked about us and doubt us. Clay, a hell of a team, man. I ain't getting that tapped out to it. But we felt like we were one of the best teams in 6 8. We moved out the five way. Thank you, God. Good job, go. I love you, bro. That's all. Right, 
Oh, big win for Frank and the guys. Moving to the 6A South Brack at Hueytown, riding a six-game winning streak, hosting Benjamin Russell. Golden Gophers up 21-7 in the second. And Ben Russell's Gabriel Benton with a quarterback draw, 30-yard gain deep inside Gopher territory. That sets up this. Benton to Malcolm Simmons, who scoops it up with a nice hands. Ben Russell within seven. Wildcats with some trickeration late in the second. Benton passes it out to Simmons, who steps back and throws to Christopher Foster for 75 yards. It's tied up at 21 going into the half. Second half, the Wildcats picked up where they left off. Taquan Williams takes the handoff to the outside, scores easy. With a 10-yard score, Benjamin Russell takes the lead after 21 unanswered. But the Golden Gophers had the last statement. Earl Woods Jr., the bootleg to Jaquel Rouser, who lays out the defender. And Hueytown wins it 56 to 28, the final score. All right, let's go to Homewood. The Patriots hosting McAdory in one of those 1-4 games that, uh, well, could go either way. Homewood student section there. McAdory's Jacob Clopton eventually finds Ja'Cory Witted. And that put the Yellow Jackets in scoring position. That score would come a few plays later. This time, Aaron Billingsley will tie the score at 21 going into halftime. But then a familiar sight for Homewood fans. It's quarterback Woods Ray connecting with Jackson Paris on a deep ball, giving Homewood a 28-21 lead. And Homewood goes on to win 35-30. All right, coming up, the Blitz Playoff Show rolls on with more round one highlights. We'll go back to 7A. And what were you doing in the eighth grade? Probably not starting at quarterback for a three-time defending state champ. We'll talk about young Trent Seaboard's night. Welcome back to the Blitz, back to 6A. Hillcrest without quarterback Ethan Crawford and running back Jamaria Johnson hosting Calera. After a quick three and out forced by the Hillcrest D, Quarterback Bryson Kimbrough finds to Corey and Thomas from 17 yards out. Patriots jump out on top. Next drive for Calera. Preston Stokes will throw, and the Hillcrest defense is going to come up with a big play. It's Preston Clendenin with the pick and the nice return, setting Hillcrest up. They dominated this game from start to finish. Here, Kimbrough will find Jamarcus Prince for a first down gain. And that's going to set up another DeCorian Thomas touchdown, this time on the ground. And the Patriots with an easy win tonight, 38 to nothing over Calera. Now let's go back to 7A. Three-time defending champ Thompson shut out two weeks ago by Hoover. Looking to bounce back. The Warriors hosting the Huntsville Panthers. Eighth grader Trent Seaborn getting the start at quarterback. And Seaborn up to the task. Hits Deuce Oliver. And Deuce is on the loose. Deuce will go the distance for the touchdown. Seaborn completed 19 of his first 23 throws for 230. Another TD pass here to A.J. Green, and then another beauty of a throw. This one to Corbin Williams inside the five-yard line, and Michael Dujan would take it in from there. The Warriors win it 34 to nothing. Let's hear from Trent Seaborn. I think everything went smoothly. Um, there were definitely a bunch of bumps here and there. Stuff I could have done better, stuff, stuff we all could have done better. A lot of mental mistakes. Me and Zach, we just got to be prepared. Um, we don't know who's going to be up, but uh, him and I, we're, we're both ready. The both Warriors get the winner of Vestavia Hills in Austin. The Rebels and Black Bears going out of Indicator. Vestavia's quarterback, John Paul Head, second half now, with his team already up 31 to nothing, hits Tucker Smith. We'll take it up the middle. Vestavia again in scoring position, trying to add to that already massive lead. Head will take it in himself. Rebels win 52 to 10. Vestavia at Thompson next week. Let's go back to 6A, the Pelham Panthers hosting the Northridge Jaguars. Northridge came out like gangbusters. The Jags' Rowdy Christensen throws to Travis Banks, 22 yards. That led to a touchdown to put him up 7-0. But here's where the game turned. Jags driving again. Look at this leaping pick by Corey Perkins. An incredible play that fired up the Pelham offense. The Panthers taking control now. Clayton Maines sneaks it in to tie it at seven. And then with the Panthers up 9-7, Maines throws a 33-yard strike to Kamari Hollis for the touchdown. Pelham wins 44-14. First playoff win for the Panthers since 2006. They go to St. Paul's next week. Last time we saw Leeds two weeks ago, 
the Green Wave defense was shutting down next door neighbor Moody. The second ranked Green Wave hosting Fairfield in a 5A first rounder leads up 26 0 at the half. But Fairfield came out in the second half swinging. Hezekiah Hudson Davis takes the carry like he shot out of a cannon. He'll go 71 yards to the house to make it 26 7. But that would be it in terms of momentum for the Fairfield Tigers because leads would come right back. Jeremiah Hunter with a nine yard touchdown to make a 33 to six green wave and then the leads pass rush all in the Fairfield backfield. Tucker Summers and Nick Davis each get half a sack on the play. Leeds wins 39 13. Staying with 5A, third ranked Pleasant Grove hosting Alexandria. Second play of scrimmage for the Spartans. Eric Hanley airs it out to Clarence Taylor. 76 yards. PG up 7 0 right out of the gate. And then the Spartans' defense will get in on the action. Cam Wormley with a strip. Nathan Lavender scoops it up, takes it to the house for an 80 yard scoop and score. And Pleasant Grove was up 15 to nothing. Now, later in the first, Pleasant Grove's Colin Moore finds a huge hole up the middle. No one's going to catch Moore. He'll go 30 yards. Pleasant Grove beats Alexandria tonight, 43-14. Fourth ranked Ramsey taking on Southside Gadsden at Legion Field tonight. The handoff here is going to be fumbled by Ramsey's Jalen Jones, but he might as well act like he did it on purpose. He would find the ball and find the way to the edge and 40 yards to the end zone as Ramsey was having an easy time of it tonight. Tramel Washington will find Jamarcus Jones coming up on a slant route and he's going to blow by everyone and Ramsey led 14 to nothing and then the Rams got a pretty mean pass rush to Caleb Patterson with the strip sack is going to be recovered by Demarcus Wynn and Ramsey wins it 61 to 25. All right coming up on the Friday Night Blitz we showed you how Leeds did. We'll show you how the Moody Blue Devils did in their first round playoff game next. The Moody Blue Devils had a historic regular season. Tonight they tried to get their first playoff win since 2004. Moody hosting Jasper in a 5A first rounder. And the Vikings threw the first punch. Check out the wheels here on Garrett Busby. He'll go 48 yards into the end zone. And then it's going to be senior captain quarterback Spencer Rosenfeld who's going to bounce off a tackler and he'll go into the end zone. Vikings take a 7 0 lead. But that's when Moody would stop messing around. Blaine Burke with the spin move. That touchdown would tie the game at seven. And then just before the half, it's going to be Burke again. And this Burke guy runs as hard as any back in the state. He's only a junior. Moody up 14 to seven. And Moody wins it 29 to 21. That's our show for tonight. Have a great weekend.